Zuclomiphene citrate is actually uh, one of the isomers of a drug that's been around for 50 years called Clomid. It's been used for infertility studies. Uh, and actually, there's two different uh, isomers that comprise Clomid. One is a trans isomer, and this has anti-estrogenic activity, and that's the predominant one. And so it has more of an androgenic signal, and that's why it's used in fertility studies. But also coming along with it is this cis uh, form of it. Again, same compound, but just a different isomer uh, that has estrogenic compound uh, properties. Uh, and so what Viru did was to isolate and produce and develop a technology to make only the cis one, the estrogenic one, also known as zuclomiphene. Um, and so that's, that's the compound. It's a weak estrogen. And so you may say, why do we need a weak estrogen in prostate cancer? So uh, throughout the, this meeting, uh, a lot of discussions being done on moving androgen deprivation therapy, which is the sort of the, uh, the, the key therapy that's used for advanced prostate cancer earlier and earlier into the disease course. So even yesterday, several sessions talked about how to, you know, moving androgen deprivation therapy earlier, which is great. And actually, we're getting much better at doing androgen deprivation, lowering testosterone levels. The problem is that the more you lower testosterone levels, you also lower estrogen levels. Because in men, the only source of, testosterone, of estrogen is testosterone. And so if you cut off testosterone, you cut off estrogen. So why is that a problem? You think in men, lowering estrogen should not be an issue at all. But it actually is, because what happens is libido goes away. Uh, you, you have bone turnover changes and a lot of bone fractures and other kinds of events. Hot flashes happen. Uh, all these things are, are principally related to the decrease or absence of estrogen in the men. And so uh, people have thought about how do we put estrogens back into men on ADT. Um, the problem with giving estrogens is that they're very powerful. So in general, estrogens are very strong. And so you give estrogens back, and what you can indeed get rid of all the things I just described. But at the same time now, what you begin to get are platelets aggregating, which call blood clots, and adverse events you don't want to have. So the nice part about zuclomiphene citrate is it's a weak estrogen. And so usually we try to develop the strongest drugs and most powerful. In this case, having a weak estrogen seems to be a great advantage because it gives us a therapeutic index where we think we can hit an effect without seeing the side effects. So zuclomiphene citrate is a weak estrogen. Uh, it's uh, now in a phase two study that's already begun. And this phase two study will be looking at the ability of this to impact hot flashes uh, in men that are on ADT. And the, the trial design is actually a pretty straightforward one. It's very similar to what you would do in postmenopausal women, where you're looking at a drug to impact hot flashes in postmenopausal women. You know, uh, you basically give them a drug, and then you see four weeks later if you impacted the uh, severity or the frequency of these moderate to severe hot flashes. And, and in men that are on ADT, 80% of them in publications have reported to have hot flashes. 30 to 40% of men have these moderate to severe hot flashes, the form we're trying to look at. And so uh, this trial, again, very simple. It's four weeks, then you look at 12 weeks to see if the effect's lasting or not. Um, instead of recording it like we always did in diaries, you know, uh, you get home, you fill out, how many hot flashes did I have today? Uh, what happens is that the recollection is not always great. I can't remember what I had for lunch today. You know, and so it's, you know, it's uh, not the best, the most accurate way of recording it. So uh, the company developed a, using a, 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 basically a cell phone device where patients record in real time if they're having hot flashes and how severe they are. So they can record them right now if you're having one, you record it so that you know, you don't, you don't have to remember at the end of the day, did you have one, did you not, what went on, you know, all that. So I think the data recording will be much more accurate uh, in this study. So it's about 100 patients. Uh, I think they were looking at somewhere on the order of about 20 sites in the U.S. Uh, and expect top line data uh, this summer from that. Uh, right now looking at, it's a dose finding study, so looking at placebo, 10 milligrams a day and 50 milligrams a day. Uh, and then uh, if, they, if they don't see a signal there, they've also produced 100 milligrams. So then the second stage of the trial would be to compare placebo to 100 milligrams. 
at, at the doses that they're looking at, the nice part is that since this is really what's found in Clomid that men have been taking and women have been taking for 50 plus years, we know the safety profile, it's known already. Uh, it's the same dose range that's already been applied in Clomid. And so um, if, we can, if they can develop a safe drug that can be used to impact these symptoms, uh, and they're also looking at things like bone turnover and some of the other things that are uh, also associated, associated with adverse effects of ADT. This could really have an impact uh, in these men.